why I lift my voice Why I sing to you You're the reason I feel like speaking to you on secrets that destroy your life as a Christian worker. Secrets that render your devotions powerless. Or secrets that even hinder you from having a devotional life in whatever area. I want to read my Bible in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3, verse number 9 and 10. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard a voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked. And what was the next thing? I hid myself. That was somebody that was having the devotion, enjoying the presence of God. But there came a time he fell into sin. And the next thing is to go and hide himself from God's presence. Now, this Workers' Congress is about your devotion as a Christian worker, the importance of it. And thank God for all those set of teachings that our lecturers have been giving to us and they've been speaking to us. I know God has been blessing you. Me too, I've been blessed. Where well, I'm sitting down. Because every one of us need to increase our devotion. But I see this. That until we remove secrets from our life, we can't get God's devotion. I mean, we can't get God's guest presence in our life. No matter how devoted we are. And I pray for somebody today. Every secret, either known or unknown, either you are aware of it, or you are not aware of it. But there is a secret in your life. That is drawing you back. That is the pain in your life. That stands between you and your God. Today. The Holy Spirit will remove it. Amen. Now your amen doesn't have no dark approved number. I said the Holy Spirit will remove it in Jesus name. Amen. Adam hid himself from God. And you know there are many of us. That there are things in our lives. That we are hiding. Now, I say a lot of people fast, they pray. I say a lot of Christians, they seek the Lord. I say a lot of people, they are looking up to God for a particular miracle, a particular blessing, a particular favor, a particular level of blessing in their life. But you know what? They are hiding things. This is where it starts from. Adam started hiding. And from then on, every generation of human beings have tried in hiding. They love to hide. We hide from God. We even hide from ourselves. We hide from others. And there are things that are hidden in our lives. Hello? When you look at it very well, human beings keep secrets. And there are different kinds of secrets in life. Number one, I can talk of national secrets. There are people who keep secrets. Government keeps secrets. In fact, in government circles, there's what they call classified files. In those classified files, there are secrets that have been sealed. You don't reveal it to anybody. In fact, if you have ever worked in government circle, there is a file that is a normal file in government office, in the civil service. They write it at the back. Keep our secret secret. There are family secrets. There are families that try to hide things. There are secrets that are known only by a few people, either in their history or in their presence, in their present location, there are family secrets. There are friends' secrets. There are group of friends that keep secrets also. I mean, either they make a covenant, or they make an oath, or they swear to a covenant together. They say, keep our secret, secret. You don't say it in the open. Whatever is covered, is covered. In fact, to some extent, if you reveal their secret, they will kill you for it. 
There are business secrets. Look at Coca-Cola, for example. Uh, what they use in mixing it together and turning it to Coca-Cola. According to report, only three people know it. And those three people, they don't fly in the same aircraft together. So that all of them will not die together and the secret will be forgotten. And they don't reveal it to anybody. Company secret. Okay, you didn't hear that one. I said, may God reveal the secret in your life. That has been keeping you in bondage. You know, if you read Psalm 19, verse number 12, the psalmist prayed that you will keep me from secret sins. Who can know his faults? Who can know his secret failures? There are things that are secret in our life. I'm not going to all those secrets I've mentioned to you today. Either family or friends or company or national secret. Rather, the one I'm going on and I will focus on personal secrets. Personal secrets. Secrets that are personal to you. Either in your present life or in your past life. Either what you are living with now or the one you have done in the past. Personal secrets. How do I interpret secret? Okay, before I interpret it for you, let me show you a story. In our office, when we started church, go to office. That was in the nineties. Uh, I had a secretary, my first secretary. Uh, she's also my member. I was pastoring a church, and she was a member of that church. So she became the secretary, the first secretary I employed in the office. Now she was twenty six. She was twenty six, very fine lady, and a good Christian. She sings in our choir, in the church. Uh, but I discover in the course of working together in the office, anytime we come to the issue of marriage, she she she's she reacts. If I say you will marry, you say lie, lie, I'm not married. In fact, she'll be warning me, as I stop you too. Then one day she said, I hate men. I said, ah. I mentioned her name. I said, What's your problem? He says, I don't have a problem. It's just that when you talk about marriage, I'm angry. I said, taking notice of her. When we are saying every other thing, she's nice, she's lovely, she's okay. But when it comes to marriage, uh -uh. so I said, saying, look, you will marry. I will make sure you marry. Number one, I'm your boss. Number two, I'm your pastor. You will marry. Oh. He says, sir, yes, sir, be careful. I can do what you don't expect. So if you keep repeating this statement, I say, you will marry. But you should not have a water. And she will frown up. And she will draw to her cocoon. And she won't talk to anybody again. She will be walking with anger. And as God will have it. She and her mother, they had this uh, accommodation problem. So I asked her to come and be living with me and my wife. And my young kids, very young boys then. So she came. We were living together. So she will leave from my house to the office. And come back to my house. So that gave me opportunity to watch her more closely. She hates men. So one day in the office, after about three years working with us, uh, when it was around 4.30, I said, everybody close. I think in the office by then, we were about five. I said, the rest of you go home. You are not going. Me and you, we are staying in the office today. He says, I said, shut up. Everybody go home. So everybody closed and left. It was me and her. So that was around five. I said, you know why we are not closing me and you? You are going to tell me the reason why you hate men today. If you don't tell me, we will not close. She smiled. Yes, sir. I don't take you as serious. I said, I'm very, very serious, sister. I'm serious today. He said, ah, yes, I let's close. I said, we are not closing. Me and you. You will tell me why you hate me and why you don't want to marry. Because you are going to put me in trouble. Because people will say, Akijan doesn't want her to marry because he's sleeping with her. Before you put me for trouble, I will put you for trouble. So tell me. She didn't budge. Five thirty. She didn't talk. Six o'clock. She didn't talk. After six, yes, I let's go. Mommy will come. I say, let mommy come. Mommy will come and meet us here. By then, there was no phone. It was around seven, around seven thirty. She start when she saw that I really meant it. 
I locked the door. I stared at the door. We are using this room and parlor office. I stared at the door. I said, you are not going out. He said, come on. You know all those tricks. She used it. I said, come on. I'm not come on today. He will tell me. When she saw that I was very serious, it was then she opened up and said, I've never told anybody in my life. I said, tell me first. Even my mother, I didn't tell her. I said, I am your pastor, not your mother. Tell me. She used all trick. I said, open up, oh. You know what she said? She said 13 years ago, when she was 13, her uncle raped her. He said, is that all? He said, yes. He said, ordinary rape. Ordinary rape. I know it's a serious matter. I'm not going to say no bad. I'm not going to say no bad. I'm not going to say Is that what you are? Is that, is that why you hate me? He said, yes, sir. I said, she raped you. She said, yes, sir. Hmm. I said, see this guy. You know, something that happened 30 years ago. And yes, even that place doesn't know somebody forcefully came there again. He like, what it is? And now you have got born again, she said yes. You have confessed to God, say yes. Either your fault or not your fault. God has forgotten. I said, me, have I raped you? She said yes. She said no. I said, hey, so all men are not the same. I said, you will marry. Does then she say, amen. Ah. Yeah, you can laugh at it today. I can say it jokingly, but that was the secret of our life. And that secret tied her down for 13 years. She couldn't move forward. Thank God, two, three years later, she got married. Though. She's married till today. So it's my mean that prevail. Let me say to somebody, whatever is a secret in your life that has tied you down and you can't devote to God, you can't enjoy God's grace and mercy in your life, today they'll be broken in Jesus' name. What is a secret? A secret is a secret pain. It's a pain. It's a bondage. It's a failure. It's a sin. It's a mistake. It's a guilt. That is in your life. A secret is something that happens to you. Or somebody did it to you. And you are so shameful of it. You don't want anybody to know. In fact. If anybody gets to know. You are really angry. And you can do whatever. To that person. That's a secret man. That's a secret sir. A secret. Is a covenant. It's an incident. It's an oath. Or something that happens to you. Or is happening to you. And you are hiding it. And you are covering it. And you don't want anybody to get aware of it. That's a secret. A secret is something you pretend doesn't happen. You want to cover it. You are pretending to others. But it's there. But you don't want to acknowledge it. You are ashamed to face it. You wish it has never happened. You wish it doesn't happen to you. And you cover it. Either from your husband, or from your wife, or from your friend, or from whoever. You love to cover it. But you know what the Bible says? He that covered his sins shall not prosper. That's why a lot of people are not prospering. Because there are secrets we are covering. Even when we say we are Christian workers, we are believers, we are even pastors, there are secrets. There are secrets. And you know, when you cover secret, that is why the devil is happy. In fact, the number one rule of Satan is that don't tell anybody. Keep it. Keep it. Don't let anybody know. That's the number one rule of Satan. He loves it. When you keep that secret of that thing that happened to you or what you are going through or what you have done or what has been done to you, he loves it when you keep it. Because as long as you keep those secret, he can keep you in bondage. And there are many people in bondage. Even while we are working in the church, 
Even while we say we are serving God, there are things that when you remember, you do. Mm. They say, what is it? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Hello? Are you still around? Are you still around? Okay. Because you didn't pay any money. You just came. A majority of you didn't buy outline. I have 12 secrets here. But I'll give you five. Okay. I'll give you seven, Sha. Seven is a perfect number. Uh -uh. I've not even started. You are shouting. I, I, I say I'm not giving you anywhere. Okay, stand up on your feet. Don't be disobedient. Oh. Are a secret in our near? Stand up now. You know it's not in your outline. So um, whatever is not in your outline, I can do what I like with it. Okay, sit down. There are secrets that keep, keep people in bondage. Number one, abuse. You have been abused. You have been raped. You have been harassed. You have been stigmatized. Ah, and you love to hide it. And you know abuse, especially sexual abuse, sexual harassment, is a, is a, is a, what do I call it? It's a pandemic in our society today. I've seen cases where father raped their daughter. I've seen cases where son raped the mother. I've seen cases where pastor impregnates seven members. Yes. One is seen in the newspaper this morning. I've seen cases where brothers sleep with sister and sister. Brother, uh -huh. I've seen cases where son-in-law impregnates mother-in-law. What has not happened? And you know people come to church and they hide it. They don't confess to anybody. And yet it's happening. And we come to church. Yeah. Because it's difficult to say. And you don't want anybody to know. In fact, I read a research recently that says that out of every six girls, for, oh, out of every ten girls, six have been sexually molested. And yeah, these are our sisters. These are our girls. These are our mothers. These are our people. And yeah, we are in church. And yeah, we are working for God. And to some people, the rape is still continuing. And we don't tell anybody. And it's a secret that finishes people's life. Like the story I told. Number two, abortion. There are people, there are a lot of Christians today who do abortion like nothing. And when I say abortion, I'm not talking to uh, married girls that get pregnant only. Married people do abortion. Married women commit abortion. Men commit abortion. Okay, I'll tell you a story. I don't know if you're a pastor here. Listen very well. For adventure, I can give you permission. Go and preach this message to your people. Because it's there. Because when there are secrets in people's life, secret that doesn't, they, they hide it from God. And God will be powerless in that church. Many times you fast, you pray, you do all those things, nothing will happen. I'll tell you a story. True life story. Every story I'm going to tell you, there are true life stories. In one small church, in one small church of about 50 people, now there is this brother who is, uh, you know, the people who refer to as 10 talented brother, a brother with 10 talents. So devoted, so dedicated, so committed, so service oriented. He comes to church first, he goes last, he's the interpreter, he's the head usher, he's in the committee, he comes the morning, he does the announcement, he's a Sunday school teacher, he's this, he's that, he's everywhere in the church. So everybody knows him. And his wife, he's a choir master. In a small church. 
They got married in the church. Um, about a year later, God blessed them with a bouncing child. And the church was happy. The church was happy. You know, in a small church, everybody knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone. Everybody waits on anyone. Because anyone can do anything. Everybody knows everyone in a small church. And we know your story. We know everything about you. So what concerns you concerns everybody. Now, two months after the first bath, the sister got pregnant. Don't ask me how, except you are a small child. That you understand. That when a lady newly give birth, her body is fresh like nothing else. And there are different kinds of women bodies. So, once they give birth, for the next one year, they won't see their monthly circle. <laughs> they are dangerous ground. They for all kinds of, okay. Then some, the moment they give birth, the things start coming. And you know when the body is fresh, <laughs> and this thing, this thing, this transformer, that uh, the baby is sucking. That's when, <laughs> the husband that has not seen it, you know, you can see it. Oh, and you need to go see he seen it open. Ah! Before you say Jesus Christ of Nazareth, she's pregnant again. Two months after the first delivery. And like I told you, it's a small church and they are very popular. Everybody knows them. And she, see, she stands in the choir and do like this to uh, the orchestra. And so the two of them start thinking, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And here you are. Before two months now, your stomach can shoot out. They decide to abort it. And they aborted the pregnancy. And nobody knew. She didn't die. The man didn't die. The baby didn't die. You know, there are sins you commit. God will not kill you immediately. You postpone your suffering. Because some people say, hey, if God doesn't like it, why didn't I die immediately? Wait. Wait. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the child, heart of the children of men are set to do evil. Mm, that's actually a six I'm quoting for you. Nothing happened to the child. They were okay. They still come to church. They were doing their service. They were serving the law. They would do the hand. She leads the choir. The brother does the announcement. Interpret the church. Does everything. Everything was going very fine. They were devoted. But two years later, they want to have another baby. Pregnancy refused to come. Three years, no baby. Four years, no pregnancy. Five years, no pregnancy. And like I told you, the small child, the pastor was concerned. Everybody was concerned. God, what's your problem? Why are you punishing us? These brothers, they are so devoted in church. And this sister, and you are not giving them their own baby. Lord, you are putting us to shame. Do something to you. And even the pastor instituted three days fasting and prayer. The whole church, they were praying for that couple only. God, give them their own baby. God, give them their own baby. Three days fasting and prayer by the whole church. Nothing happened. Many people are praying, but God will never answer. Because there are secrets that you should reveal. It's not enough to pray. It's your way clean before him. Or you are like a damn that went and hid himself. Nothing happened. Until I know the guy involved. I know the person involved. I know him one on one. He has this grace to pray. And there's this other brother who have grace to see. So they came to that church. And the personal pastor said, Look, we have a problem. He said, What's the problem? He said, we have this couple. They are so devoted and committed in the church. But God has blocked her womb for six years now. After the first baby. Why is God doing like that? Doesn't God see their service? That one said, let's go to their house. And they went to their house. There are such new people. There are gifts. I know the evangelist. He told that brother, I say, I pray. You see. So close your eyes. I want to pray. You must see. Yeah. They are seeing real spiritual gifts. And the prayer I just pray, he asked the couple to kneel down. Father, you are the God of light that reveals everything secret. The Bible says everything in darkness is light before you. Lord, we are praying fasted. The church are prayed, but you are not giving time to this uh, couple. Please.
Please tell us the secret. In Jesus' name I pray. Now what did you see? <laughs> yes. That's not, you see when somebody is there, they have to give him phone number to, it's not Jesus. When it is Holy Spirit, it's raw and direct. The brother, just two minutes prayer. The brother just said, the Lord said, we should ask them. What did they do? Two months, after the, I mean two weeks, two months after the, pre, the birth of their first baby. They did something. Let them say it with their mouths. It was then they confessed that she got pregnant. And because of shame, they decided to abort. And you didn't tell the whole church. You say we can't say it. And church was doing three day fasting and prayer. Accusing God wrongly. You kept quiet. Eh, we have repented secretly. We thought that is okay. No, as a Christian worker, as a leader in the church, there are some sins you commit. If you repent secretly, God will not forgive you. You have to repent openly. You have to go and confess. That's one of the dangers of becoming a minister and an officer in the church. Your sin is no more hidden. Your sin is not your sin only. Your sin is the sin of everybody. And God will punish everybody because of you. Oh, Bible? Achan. You remember Achan? Because he was an officer in the army. He did what God said he should not do. He seemed bounced back on the whole of the army. So when you become an officer in the church, a leader in the church, a minister in the church, there are things you do. Even if you repent personally, God has not forgiven you. Hello? Am I still talking to somebody? And you know our God is an amazing God. They repented. They wept. They were prayed for. That month, she got pregnant. Can I pray for somebody? All the blessings that those secrets have been denied you. As you repent of them today, God will have mercy on you in Jesus' name. Abortion. Courts. That's number three. There are people in courts. And they are coming to church. There are people who have swore to an oath. People who have swore to a covenant. Yes. There are people who have spilled blood. There are people who are, hey, they have a blue, blue blood covenant. And yeah, they are working in church too. And they have not confessed it. It's a secret. And you don't want anybody to know. You remember, was that not about two, three years back? A pastor somewhere there, Atila Alimosho, when he died, it is caught people that came and buried him. You budget alone, Ajanako. I shake a shadanako. Hello. Number four. You have been bullied. Somebody has spoken wrongly against you. Somebody said things to you. Even when you were small. You are old now. You have grown up. But that thing is still there. You see keep it locked up in your heart. And when you see the person. You shake your head. How are you mommy? Mm. It might be your uncle. It might be your father. It might be your brother. It might be your mate. It might be your friends who bullied you and said things against you. And as you grow, those things are still there in your heart. And anytime you remember, hey, in fact, that's your motivation in life. I must succeed and show him. And show him. You know, it happened to somebody. Somebody wrote a book. I know the title of the book. Mrs. Jones, you are wrong. And who was Mrs. Jones? Mrs. Jones was his uh, primary school teacher. And in class, one day Mrs. Jones said, you blockhead. You can never amount to anything in life. That was when he was around C7. And he kept it in his heart. When he succeeded, when he, in his 40s, he said, Mrs. Jones, you are wrong. He kept it in his heart. That statement, for more than 35 years. And that became his motivation in life. 
So everything he does, he want, he does. He wants to put Mrs. Jones uh, wrong. There are some of us like that. We keep those secrets. That's one out of one thousand that we succeed. Do. There are many people they allow those walls to press them down, and they are saying you are a blockhead that you never amount to anything in life. Uh -huh. So why are you trying? I cannot amount to anything in life. God will deliver you from that bondage in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sexual sin. Sexual sin. That's your number seven, right? Yeah, yeah see, number five. <laughs> yeah. As a man, you are unfaithful to your wife. As a husband, you are unfaithful to your wife. As a wife, you are unfaithful to your husband. And you catch it too. Nobody knows who. You are still living in his house, oh, and you are still living in our house. Oh. I'll tell you a story. Am I allowed? Okay. A woman was sick. In fact, she was diseased. He moved from sickness to disease. I hope you know the difference between sickness and disease. Sickness comes and go with a little bit of uh, rest, medication, everything. After some few days, sickness go. But disease, disease. It will not come easily. It will hide in your body for a long time. By the time it will come out, nine out of ten times, it's a terminal disease. It terminates that life. So our own grew from sickness to disease. And there's nowhere she goes. There's nothing she does that she will get healed. Until she came to church. I met a good preacher who knows the word of God. I have the spirit of God. You see, that's why me, I don't like. This one say, pray for me. Pray for me. What will I pray for? What did you do that brought this upon you? Because people who hide what they do and be requesting for prayer. And they turn a lot of pastors to people that cannot, that doesn't know what they are doing. I don't like people say, yes, I pray for me. Pray for me. For what? What did you do? And yes, I just pray. Hey, me, I know they pray in vain. They brought her to church. And the pastor prayed and preached and ministered and said, Madam, I'm sorry to announce to you that you will die in that your disease. The only exception is that there is a secret you are hiding. In fact, it is that secret that led to this disease. Confess so that God can heal you. It took her time. It took her time. And she wept. She wept. And said, hey! Hey! No one people are doing like that. You know that there's trouble. You know what she confessed? She had five children. And none of them belonged to the husband. How? Look at what she said. He said about two years into their marriage, she discovered that the husband can really sleep with her, but there's no life in his seat. So he can't impregnate her. And he loved the husband. And he doesn't want to divorce him. So he decided to use wisdom. He will go, devilish wisdom, you know, not heavenly wisdom. Oh. She will go out there, see a man. And she's the one that will initiate it. Oh. See the way you are. Can you sleep with a woman of my stature? That will say, ah, you... Yes, you can't do anything. Now say me. Let's go. I'll prove to you that I can do something. Uh, only mouth. When we get there now, you can't do anything. Sister, you are talking to me like that. I say yes. What can you do? Huh? And they will go to hotel, and the man will jail her and tell her And once it is that time. She will run away. So even the man that impregnated doesn't know what he did turns to pregnancy. And she will bring it back home. And she will make sure it is uh, during a uh, ovulation time when she's very dangerous. And the husband will top it up. So that's how she got five children. That it was the thought of it that led to sickness. And this disease. Eh? Okay. So, Esther, have mercy on me. And you know, they prayed for her. She confessed. 
and repented. And prayer was made. And when she was going, he said, Pastor, I think I should tell my husband, hey! you have confessed to man of God, you have confessed to God. He said to because if you tell that man, he might kill himself. He might kill those children. He might send you out of that house. You can destroy, you destroy yourself, destroy that man, destroy those innocent children. So, you have told God. You have told man of God. And the Bible says to the disciple, Jesus said it. Anybody sin, you forgive. Me, my, me, God, I have forgiven you. So, as a man of God, I have forgiven you. And God has forgiven you. Yes, you say I should not say it. Don't say it. You have said it to God. And the blood of Jesus has washed it away. When God looks at your record, no, nothing is there again. And you know that's how she left. And immediately she was healed. Do you know how God did the miracle? And she started serving God. Serving God. She got devoted. Two years later. One of the child had this uh, uh, contagious uh, sickness. And the doctor said they should bring the whole family. They have to do DNA and blood tests for everybody. She was afraid. Hey, pastor! I said, believe the Lord. The Lord has done a miracle. And you know, by the time the result came out, all the children were from the man. That's what you are hiding. Oh. That's what you are hiding and you are dying for. Oh. You know, genuine repentance. When you genuinely repent and you don't go back to your sin, like that Proverbs 28, 13, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confess and does what to oh, forsake it shall receive mercy. Number 10. I am jumping. Yes. I have the grace of jumping. You know, I don't want to give you everything because of those people that love to go and preach my messages. You go and preach it now. God will walk. You will collect offering. And you will remember me. Additions. When you are addicted. That's number six, right? Some people are addicted. They have addictions in their life. I am talking to Christian workers and leaders. Addictions. Some people are addicted to wine. Alcohol. Red wine. Some people are addicted to sex. They watch pornography. Yeah. On their computer. I'm a four-core baby on my book. Lalaba. Some people are addicted. And yet they are praying, no? They are fasting. They are doing service in the church. And yet they are addicted. Some people drink, when they drink alcohol, finish. They use fleet and perfume. So that people will not do what to. Or air freshener. And yet they are elders in the church. They are deacons in the church. Addition. Some people are addicted to gambling. Beth Niger. Baba Jebu, that's, that's what takes all their money away. And yeah, they are leaders in the church. Hello? Addition. Some people are addicted to drug. Yes. They sniff cocaine or heroin or marijuana. I know preachers that take things so that they can be on high. They say it is difficult to face people without you. What is that? Are you? Yeah, addition. And some people go and hide under one Bible passage that says, Take a little wine. Hey, you are not free. You are not free because there are other passages that nullify that. Addictions. Addictions. One boy was caught. Okay, don't let me tell that one here. Don't let me tell that one here. Number seven. Hmm? 
Back to sender. How can you say I should tell you and the thing wants to be catching me? Uh -uh. Back to sender. Sexual confusion. Yeah. Sexual confusion. It is under sexual confusion. You have people that are gay. People that are lesbians. A boy. He just loves to sleep with fellow boys. A girl. Love to sleep with fellow girls. Even married women. They love to sleep with each other. When their husband is not around. I remember in one church. One church. Uh, one sister went to another church. Where they were doing fasting and prayers. And to pray for her. So that she can conceive. After six years of marriage. And she, he and the husband have gone to the doctor. They say nothing is wrong with her. Nothing is wrong with him. So she came. And after two years prayer. Nothing. Then one day she said. Eh, Pastor. Please stop praying. Because I want to divorce my husband. Then I said. Ah, you are going to a Bible believing church. You can divorce your husband. You know the Bible is against divorce. Eh, he said Pastor you don't know anything. And truly she divorced the husband. So a year later, the pastor saw her in town and said, Sir, the secret you don't know is that my husband is a gay. My husband sleeps with fellow leaders in the church. People that are group leaders, group coordinator, group this, home self, fellowship leader, leaders, officers in the church. Three of them, they come to the house and they will be sleeping together through the annals. So he said for those six years, she didn't have pregnancy. Her husband never slept with her once. He married her, but he doesn't talk sleep with her. And she is not uh, Maria or Mary. The angel Gabriel we, we visit. And those are leaders in the church. She said she has reported to leadership. They didn't do anything. And these people are ministry in church. So, there are a lot of secrets. Look, we, we, we need to pray. We need to pray. I can continue and continue and continue. But the last one I will give you. Stealing. There are people who have the spirit of kleptomania. What do I call it? Kleptomania. They just love to steal. They see what is useful. They see what is not useful. They steal pints. Do you know there are ladies that see bra? Even on cash it. Like you are sitting down there now. If you are not careful with your phone, somebody can steal it. And yet there are officers in the church. I remember one Sunday service uh, during offering time. Some people left their phone and they came to give offering the phone. By the time they got there, the phone has disappeared. So one of the phone was a very expensive phone. Uh -huh. So after service, the woman went and told pastor, please my phone. It was when I came for offering that somebody took the phone. Hey, please help, help me. And they pick a call. And they called the line. And the line went through. One young boy answered. He said, yes, oh, that is God's blessing for me in this service. Stand up on your feet. Every secret in my life. They must be revealed today. Abby. There are secrets that people are hiding. There are things you are doing. Even married men. There are things you are doing. There are people who steal and steal and steal and steal and steal and steal. What they don't even need is a spirit. And you are hiding it. There are two ways to get over your secret. Number one. Confess it to God. Number two, go and confess it to your pastor. Because as long as you keep those secrets, they will tie the hands of God from blessing you. You confess it. There are secrets you can keep, oh, but there are secrets you can never keep. As long as you keep them, you are in bondage. All the stories I've told you, I'll tell you just one last story. I have more, but I'll tell you just one. A boy was raised by dogs. Who do I say raised him up? Group of dogs. How did it happen? A young girl got pregnant and she hid it 
and nobody knew. When she was to deliver, she didn't have the experience. She thought she wants to poo poo. So she went to the dumb side and did like this. And baby fell down. And she stood up, tied her clothes, and walked away. It's still happening. But the amazing thing, that baby, some dogs came to the dumb side and saw a new baby. Ordinarily, they should eat it up. But they didn't eat it. They lick it. They lap it. They lap it and carry it to the forest. And started taking care of the baby. And nobody knew until that boy was five years old. It was when he became five years old that some Christians God gave them this ministry of raising abandoned children. So they were going about and the Lord led them to that forest and they saw a five year old boy in the midst of dogs who have never lived be among human beings. And you know when he wants to talk he will do go! And when he's angry he will do They rescued the boy. Brought him home. It took them about five years. For them to change him to the way human being talk. When he was changed. He grew. He married. After his marriage. When he slept with a woman for the first time. Something sparked. Anything in skirt, he must go for them. If there are hundred women, he wants to sleep with all of them. He prayed, he fasted, he did all this, but the problem continued. Until one day, somebody with a prophetic gift says, There's a secret in your past. That you don't know. That is the source of this trouble. Go to your parents. Let them tell you where they raised you. I say no. My parents are the ones that raised me. They say yes. But somebody raised you before they raised you. That's when he came to those who were his parents. Those whom he knew as his parents. Those Christian people that raised him. He said please. Tell me the truth and nothing but the truth. Who raised me? I just said we are the one that raised you. He said, No. The prophecy says somebody raised me before you raised me. They say, Yes, so it is dogs that raised you. Of, actually, you were five years old when we got you from dog. And the way you talk is go, 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 mm, go. He said, No wonder. I have the nature of dogs. You know dogs sleep around. And dogs doesn't have shame. He was prayed for. Because he knew the secret now. And the secret was out. And prayer was made. And that doggy spirit. Jumped out of him. Every secret holding you in bondage. As a Christian worker. The Lord deliver you today in Jesus name. I want you to open your mouth. This one is not shouting prayer. Some of you, you know the secret. Ah, you thought, oh, I thought God has forgotten. Rara, rara. You didn't confess it, you were hiding. Because as long as Satan was hiding, no miracle. Hmm. And they say, one you. Let me give you one. If you go and read Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, he said, God shall bring every work and every secret into judgment. Now, if you go and read Romans chapter 2, verse 16, it also says, In the day that God shall judge the secret of man according to my gospel. The secret you don't reveal today, wait. One day God will open it. But by then it will be too late. He will judge it by then. Oh, you don't want to be ashamed today before few people. And that day you'll be ashamed before the whole world. But I advise you, don't wait till then. Today, let's confess our sin. 
The first prayer is this. If you want to kneel down, kneel down. If you want to stand up, stand up. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to do whatever, do but pray. Lord, this is the secret in my life that I've been trying to hide from you. This is what has happened to me. You might be a repo. You might still be a drunkard. Or you are married. You have a girlfriend. You are having an affair. Or you have committed abortion. Or those areas God has helped me to touch. Or even the one I didn't touch. But the Spirit is telling you, uh -huh, that is you. That is you. Oh. Kneel down. And let's confess to God. God, this is the secret in my life. Have mercy on me today. Can we pray in Jesus' name?